All right, uh, back for another live stream. This time's gonna be another first look. Uh, I did a first look on City of Mist, and now we're gonna take a peek at Icons, uh, which is created by Steve Kenson, who um, I actually have booked to come on the podcast. I'll be interviewing him. And uh, I did not realize this when I started exploring Icons because I kept hearing good things about it. He also did uh, Mutants and Masterminds, which is a game I did play uh, back uh, when I was a younger man. Uh, but it gives you an idea of how old I am that I used to play like first edition uh, Mutants and Masterminds. So from my understanding, the idea behind this Icons is unlike Mutants and Masterminds, which is a bit of a crunchy game, what this is supposed to be is something a little bit lighter. Um, a little bit more narrative, uh, a little less rules intensive and, um, is supposed to harken back from my understanding to the old TSR Marvel RPG, which I loved. Um, so whenever, one of the things I like to do whenever I'm going to dive in and kind of get a first feel or look at the game is I like to look at the character sheet. So let's take a look at the character sheet. <laughs> and I'll, when I saw this come up. And I saw that this was the character sheet. I uh, It really made me laugh because this is it. It's one page. It's got, what, uh, six attributes. You've got a place for specialties. You've got a place for your powers. It looks like this is for your picture, for your icon. And you've got your stamina, determination, uh, a little bit of rules blurb here, and qualities. And... You know, the way this game is being sold is it's supposed to be a rules light, uh, very narrative, very thematic superhero game. And uh, if they're shooting for the Marvel TSR look and feel, this has that little bit of look and feel. Uh, so I chuckled immediately when I saw the, uh, <laughs> the character sheet. So let's take a quick look here. All right, so Steve Kenson, as I mentioned, did the design and the writing uh, for this game, Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, Dan Hauser does the art uh, for it. Um, and Ad, Ad Infinitum Adventures is the publisher, which I believe is, from my understanding, is Steve's, Steve's company as well. So it looks to be a little bit like a one-man show, which is, which is cool. All right, so let's take a look at the introduction. All right, this is... Every single role-playing game seems to feel the need, and, I, and I'm not criticizing this, but um, uh, Anthony Boyd uh, brought this up. Uh, the Runeslinger brought this up, and it's a legit thing. Is you know When do we get to the time where we don't have to explain at the beginning of every RPG book what role-playing is? Uh, that's going to tell us that we've really kind of gotten to the next level because we don't have to explain what a board game is when you open up a board game. And you know here it is here. Here it looks like he outlines uh, why he created Icons. Um, what you need to play. All right. The basics. I gotta say, I, I dig the art, the look and feel of it. it's very comic booky. Um, so I, I kind of like the style. All right. So everything is rated in levels arranged in a scale from one to 10. This is straight from Marvel. Um, now I'm not saying he lifted it from Marvel, but this is how Marvel did their different attributes as well. Uh, the icon scale is three is considered average. Yeah, this is, gosh, this brings me back in time to the old TSR Marvel. So you, instead of having just numbers, they have adjectives. So like I could have, let's look at the character sheet. So I could have, uh, incredible strength, <laughs> um, our supreme strength, which is, I try to remember what the hundred plus level, it was one to a hundred in Marvel. And, uh, I think unearthly was the highest you could get in Marvel. Uh, because the scale is calibrated for superheroes, six is divine is all right. So six is the highest a human can get here. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So I like that. Time is measured in abstract segments. The two types of timekeeping are narrative and action. It's kind of like uh, in star Wars RPG uh, from fantasy flight games. You've got uh, structure time and unstructured time. Narrative time. Okay. Oh, this is kind of nice. So narrative time is based on the progress of the story. The basic unit of narrative time is a chapter, like a chapter of a comic book or a novel focused on a particular locale or event. For example, if the heroes foil a bank robbery, everything that happens at the bank, including pages of action time, is one chapter. 
uh, all the chapters of a single game make up an issue. This is cool. Very thematic. Um, multiple issues make up a series. I like that. So just rebranding re the type of language we normally use in talking about sessions and scenes in RPGs, but branding it in the comic book genre, which I dig. Action time, this is, I would assume, is going to be your structure time. Uh, fights, chase scenes, and so forth. Yeah. So each page character can move, act, react, or interact. These options discuss more in taking actions chapter. Okay. Distance. Distance in icons is measured in abstractly in ranges. Okay. That's very similar to the Star Wars RPG. Benchmarks. So that was, was there benchmarks here? No. How fast can I go? How much can I lift? How far is it? With icons? Okay. Oh, okay. So this is matching my 10 levels to different benchmarks to go through. So if I have got a, a speed of 10, I can go near light speed. Uh, I, well, if I, my weight is 10, I weigh as much as a mountain. Um, steel has a level of eight. Okay. All right. So abilities, let's go back here. These are my attributes here, I think. Uh, so we've got prowess, the ability to fight at close range or without, with or without weapons, coordination, that's your agility, strength, the strength, intellect is intellect, awareness is perception, willpower is force of personality, conflict. Okay. Each attribute and icons covers a lot of ground, so characters may have specialties reflecting aspects. Okay. And then powers. Okay. Stamina, which we saw on the character sheet down here. Um, that's going to be the, his strength plus his willpower. A single attack inflicts nine, level nine or higher damage will reduce the character to zero stamina. All right, so for example, here with strength four and a willpower five has stamina nine. A single attack inflicting level nine or higher damage will reduce the character to zero stamina. So it's hit points, right? Determination, which we saw over here in the uh, thing. The difference between a hero and someone who just gets lucky is determination. It's what lets the hero pull off amazing feats when the chips are down. Icon's characters have a determination level, similar to our other abilities, which provides a pool of the DP or determination points they may spend during the game. Uh, see determination later. All right, so that sounds a little bit like um, Benny's, right, in uh, Savage Worlds or uh, the Destiny points in Star Wars. All right, when a character's capabilities are called into question, that is when the character attempts. All right, so test are resolved using the following formula. Effort, acting ability plus D6. So they would take one of their abilities, which would be 1 to 10, and roll it against a D6. Minus the difficulty. So it's an opposed roll. Opposing ability plus a D6. This is often expressed in the format of test of abilities versus ability or ability versus difficulty. Throwing a punch. Punching an opponent is a test of prowess, your ability at close fighting. All right. So how do I test? What ability do I test? Often the ability for a test is fairly obvious. Maybe wiggle room. Okay. Some situations, one ability may limit another, applying the lower of the two abilities to the test. For example, juggling is a coordination test. However, a juggling contest involves who can go the longest without getting tired, bring strength into the equation, and the character involved uses the lower of coordination or strength levels. Interesting. In other situations, characters may get a choice of abilities for a test. Okay. Effort. To attempt a test, whenever controls the testing character... This determines the effort that goes in throwing a punch. If you want to take a swing at a bad guy, roll a d6 and add the results to your prowess. Oh, dude, I'm a I'm a glutton, glutton uh, for this. It's just like with mini games, man. Once I dive into something, I get so fascinated about seeing how it all works. And you know, as I started learning about this and realizing I was able to get Steve on the show, I'm like, yeah, I need to I need to get into this and and read it. Um, it, uh, I've definitely ignited an old fire with this RPG stuff, man. 
So difficulty. If the test is against another character, that's easy, right? Subtract the difficulty. All right. So here's the outcomes. Oh, okay. So it's got a mar it's got it's not just target number then. Excuse me. You can have moderate. That's kind of cool. I like that. I like that you have variable levels of success and failures. Uh, something I like about the dice system in uh, FFG. Something I like about uh, Blades in the Dark. It's got a kind of a, a uh, Power by the Apocalypse version of this. Some actions, the outcome of the test is also an effect. All right, so throwing a punch. Although you hit your opponent, you still need to determine the effect of the attack. Your strength is four for damage, and a major success on a bashing attack means you may also slam the target. Okay. All right, so here's how you team up. Boy, super simple. Super simple rule sets. Pyramid test. When heroes are confronted with a complex task, even with degrees of success and failure, the GM can set up a pyramid test. With a pyramid test, a single test can succeed, but multiple smaller successes also accumulate to accomplish the task. Huh. Oh, an investigation. Okay. Interesting. So it's like... Uh, Oh, what is it called in Star Wars? Um, or like, a, well, in uh, Blades in the Dark, you have clocks to kind of do this a little bit. Um, and there's a term for it in Genesis in Star Wars, and I can't think of what it is, like an ongoing, I can't remember what it's called. But th this is not, this is a visually a little bit different looking. Um, it's interesting, and it looks like, Two major outcomes add up to a massive success, while two moderate outcomes, major success, and so forth. So you, you're, the degree of success you have looks like it builds on itself. That's kind of cool. So stopping a train. a hero, The hero needs to stop a runaway train before it reaches a broken bridge. Over a mountain pass, he needs to achieve a massive success against difficulty eight. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. There's modifiers to the pyramid. Very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder in the VTTs, in the virtual tabletops, whether you would want to visualize this or not. Um, what's interesting? Players in a Game Master can activate a quality to gain an advantage or to create trouble. Qualities are activated in the form of the following type of statement. Because of blank, I get blank. All right, all right. Because I'm the world's greatest detective. Okay, so this gets into this get into specialties. All right. See the quality section of hero creation. So where do you put your qual? Oh, there's your qualities there. So here I would put a quality. So here's an example. Uh, world's greatest detective. Um, because I have the sworn to destroy all monsters, I get to push my ability. Oh, okay. So these quality statements that you put in here, you can use as boosts. Um, something like this a little bit in uh, John Harper's um, uh, Agon has something kind of like this. Um, and I think this uh, concept is older than Agon and Icons, but I could be wrong. Um but okay, so that's kind of a neat way to uh, narratively get advantages. I like that. Qualities can be activated in any of the following ways. Determination to activate the quality. That's how you use the determination points. Though I haven't, I don't know if it's told us how we get those maneuvers. Interesting. Learning and creating qualities, team qualities, trouble. Stunts are unusual applications of a character's abilities, using them to do things they don't normally, but would fit with several overall nature of the ability. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, here's determination. All heroes and looms have a starting determination level of six. Okay, so everybody starts off with the same determination. Interesting. Minus one for each power the hero has. Oh, that's kind of cool. So if you were to do like a 
maybe like a Batman without any powers or something like that, you would have more determination. That's very interesting. They hear a start play, so it resets every session. Interesting. And then lead, there's abilities that allow you to that adjust that, the leadership ability. That's kind of cool. Tells you how you can spend them, how you can gain them. When the GM spends a determination point on behalf of the GM character, the affected player gains a determination. So if I were to use a determination as the GM, it, it uh, passes one over. So it's a currency that goes back and forth. Um... When one of the hero's qualities is activated to cause trouble for the hero, whether done by the player or the GM, the hero gains. Okay, if your character's determination points total, the start of an issue is less than the hero's determination level. It increases up to that, so it resets. That's what they're saying. Damage. Resisting reduces the amount of damage suffered by an attack by subtracting its level from a character with damage resistance. Okay, so that's armor. Now they got minion rules. That's cool. I like that there's... The, so you can see different levels here. He's definitely going rules light, but he's giving some options to add a little bit more levels to it. There's recovery. And then we got an example of play with a... Solomon, not Solomon Grundy. <clears throat> Hero creation. So one thing that you hear talked about with this uh, game is that you randomly generate your hero. Which, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess if, it's, if this is meant to be just a pickup game and kind of like one shots and stuff like that, it could be cool. So let's take a look and see how it works here. So you roll on the origin table. You're trained, transformed, birthright, gimmick. Um, that's for your device. All your devices, artificial. Character's a robot or some kind of construct. Unearthly, the character is an alien, elemental, angel, devil, or even deity. Okay. So what is the most common? So it's two, three. So your most common is going to be... With 2d6, is going to be 7. It's going to be the most common roll you have. So these three here, Transform, Birthright, and Gimmick, are going to be the more common one that you would roll on uh, 2d6. Right? What do you roll? What do you roll with? I assume it's 2d6 because it goes from 2 to 12, but it doesn't say, does it? Oh, yeah. Duh. 2d6. Wow. I'm not a smart man. All right, if you're creating your hero without random rules, either choose an origin or apply it to... Okay. Level determination. Roll on the following table to determine the levels for abilities when created to do so. This could be kind of fun, just to randomly create a hero. So each of the levels of each of your attributes, randomly, this is very old school. <laughs> old school RPG. Attributes. Roll once on the level determination for each attribute recorder. Attribute swap. You can also choose to swap any two attribute levels after you've determined them. For example, if you roll a strength of three and an awareness of seven. Oh, okay. So you got some flexibility. You don't have to stick to the rolls. Uh, did they curve it to, to match out? Well, Jim, they curve it by the fact that you're using 2d6, right? Um, so there is a, you know, just like when you're playing craps, you're more likely to roll a seven with two two six-sided dice so the the curve the curve is always going to be around seven uh, does that make sense with this option you roll six attribute levels and then assign them see i kind of like that a la carte attributes so you'd roll them all so how many did we say there were there's six of them, so you, you would roll six times and then assign them on there. I kind of like that a little bit. Um, but that, that's covered in swapping, too, right? Uh, go back one. There's one value for two to four, and right. Uh, you're talking here, right, Jim? 
So yeah, there's only one value for seven, which is going to be the most common thing you roll with 2d6. Um, it might, Jim. That's true. Maybe that flattens the curve. I don't know. Well, no, it can't because after seven, five and six and eight and nine are the most common. And those are two options. And those are two, three, well, actually two, three, four, 11, 12 unearthly. Yeah, there is a bit of a curve there. Good call, Jim. Good call. Um, all right, what, where are we? Attributes. Okay, so powers. So here you get to roll how many powers you get. So it looks like you're going to get somewhere between three and four. Yeah, it's not quite flat. You're right. It is just a little bit different. It's a good call, Jim. Um, so three to four powers. Um, once you've determined the number of powers, roll for each power on the following table. Okay. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. So those are your categories of powers. So you got mental, control, defensive, offensive, movement, alteration, Alexa. sensory. Here's your alteration pro. Oh, this is cool. There's your control powers, your defensive powers. Very simple. Very, very simple, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. To determine the number of specialties your hero has, roll on the following. So, again, here's the number of specialties. That's <laughs> my daughter on Alexa. Sorry. So, I don't know exactly what specialties are. Don't worry about it. Interesting. So I'm not sure what this, how the specialties work into it. Oh, look at that. You roll a D6, then a D6 within that. That's interesting. Description. Choose three qualities of your hero. That's the little things that allow you to uh, activate larger stuff. And your stamina. Game master approval. Point-based hero creation. Whoops. But I don't like to roll up a hero. It's okay. You don't have to. If you really don't want to, the random hero just is a tendency to such inspiration, not frustration. All right. The, the alternative is to create your hero with a budget of 45 points, which the GM may adjust as desired. Each level of an ability and each level of a power costs one of these points. So you, uh, that's kind of cool. It gives you the option to do points based. That's cool. This approach tends to create heroes that fit into a somewhat more narrow range. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I agree, Jim. I like that. And really, I think it would depend on the play group, right? Some play groups would be like, yeah, let's just roll random heroes and call them the masked idiot and let's play and have some fun. And other ones might want to point it out because they have a specific type of hero they want to create. Um, so here they're going to walk through uh, the hero creation. Oh, creating a hero and icon is just the first step. Each team has an origin. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, and here it goes through the different powers. Very nice. Well, I want to go back to the table of contents because we're only on page 80 of 234. What the hell's in the rest of this book? It's a pretty big book. All right, so there's hero creation. Then it goes through the powers, through the specialties. Okay, then it gets farther into the rules. Tips on how to be a game master. Let's take a look at villain. Let's not look at villain creation. Now here, let's look at adversaries. Let's look at some of the villains. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. This, is, this could be a fun for just a fun light night uh, of RPGing. Boy, they didn't even try to pretend. That's not Solomon Grundy. They call him Grudge.
Oh, there's Doctor Who. Very cool. I just had a curiosity. Do they have some heroes too? So here's the heroes. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this guy. So he has got six is the highest ability, human ability, right? So pretty good coordination. Average strength for a human is three, I thought I saw. So super smart, good awareness, so high willpower, prowess. His fighting ability is the best. Specialties of athletics, investigation, law, martial arts, stealth, whips. Powers, the noose of judgment, blinding device, incredible. Seven, extra is swinging. I don't know what that means yet. Qualities, crusading attorney, grim guardian of the gallows, and quote from the poem, hangman. Super simple. Super, super simple. Huh. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, it's exactly what it, it is sold as, is a very rules light, simple uh, superhero game. Um, very different than Mutants and Masterminds, which is far more crunchy. Um, and this definitely has kind of that feel of the TSR Marvel game, uh, as the, as was it was sold to me as. Um, I'm very anxious to talk to Steve, who made this, because he kind of went both directions, right? He kind of went crunchy with mutants and masterminds which uh for a lot of people's is the gold standard of uh superhero role-playing games and then uh I'll be, I'll be interested to find out what made him decide to put this out um and what drove him to create this as well uh so if you're not a member uh if you're not subscribed to the tabletop talk podcast it's on all the podcatchers I've got interviews with creators both in tabletop gaming as well as in role-playing so check it out if you want to see interviews um for those of you that are watching uh, right around now in February, uh, I'm going to be releasing on the 17th is my interview with John Harper, creator of uh, Blades in the Dark. Um, upcoming things, we've got uh, on the 28th of uh, February at 2.30 is my live stream of The Good, The Scum, and The Villainy, my Star Wars RPG. And then we are on the 25th of February tw uh, 2021, we're streaming... Uh, blades in the dark and that's going to be at 6 30 p.m eastern so 2 30 p.m eastern on sunday the 28th for star wars and then on the 25th thursday at 6 30 is uh blades but uh appreciate you sticking around that was my first impressions of icons uh by uh, steve H uh kenson take care